This is regular physics. This is your vector addition uh, practice worksheet. This is the last problem and um, kind of a wordy problem here, but it is a vector addition problem. We have three forces that we want to add together. All right, so we've got the two Eskimos pulling one way and the stupid dog pulling the other way, and we want to know the resultant of all these different forces. One going one way, one going the other way. You know, do they cancel out? What do all these forces do when I add them together? All right, so uh, the first thing that the problem asks us to do is to kind of interpret this then from a top view. So what I've done then is I've drawn our three force vectors on kind of a north, south, east, west sort of coordinate system. All right, looking at this view from the top so we can kind of interpret this. Okay, so here's our three vectors. Now, what are we going to do with these vectors? Well, we're going to add them together, all right? Now, just real quick, we don't have to do this, but um, let's see what happens when we add these together with, uh, graphically, all right? So there's Oopa Loopa, and there's added then Muck Luck, you know, kind of working together there. And then there's the stupid dog working against them. And there's the resultant of all three of them together, all right, if we're going to do this by the graphic method. Of course, this entire uh, problem set is using the component method. All right, so what I wanted to do here, I wanted to show you what the difference is between a situational diagram and a vector addition diagram. Okay, what we have here is uh, this first drawing. This is our situation. And that's well and good, but this is our vector addition diagram. Okay, two very different diagrams. All right, so let's break these into components, and let's do this again, but let's use the component method. All right, so for ease, I'm just going to call these vectors M, O, and D, muck, luck, oopa, loopa, and dog. All right, so what I'm trying to do is I want to add all these vectors together using the component method. All right, the first thing I need to do is I need to take each vector and break them into vertical and horizontal components, which I've done here. All right? You can see the little uh, right triangle that I've shaded there. The length of each one of these legs is 6.6 .6 to the right and 4.6 upward, respectively. Okay, now I need to repeat that process with my other vectors. Okay, using, again, trig. I've used the uh, cosine and sine functions. Notice this one, the Y component or the vertical component is pointed down. Very important. Okay, this vector is easy. I don't have an up, down, a component, just a, a left component. All right, now I'm basically combining like terms here. I'm combining all my left-right vectors, and I get this answer 10.2 to the right. Combine all my up-down vectors, I get this answer 1.5 up. Now, that is my resultant in component format. Those are the components of the resultant. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to take the components and combine them into a single vector. And that's what I'm doing right here. All right, there's the components of the vector with uh, Pythagorean uh, I can get the value of the vector components added together because those two guys are at right angles. All right, and then my last thing I need to do is I need to find this angle theta. Uh, in this case, I'm using the inverse tan function. I get 8.4 degrees. And uh, by default, I know that that is uh, counterclockwise from the positive x-axis, just to be more specific. We say 8.4 degrees north of east. So these three acting together, this is the result of their efforts, a 10.3 newton force, 8.4 degrees north of east. Uh, when we get into Chapter 6, we're going to be doing a lot of this uh, when we study forces. Okay, so I hope this problem went well for you.